what's going on everybody? Welcome to a side series that I do on this channel called Sequence Break. This is now episode four, and the point of the show is to try to get the game to go out of order. Trying to get to certain scenes of certain games without certain characters or certain key items and just see what happens. Now, I've been told a million times if I'm ever going to do another Paper Mario video, I have to get the man himself, Strider 7X on board. And I'm very happy to say that I somehow managed to pull that off, so very excited there. But all right guys, I'm feeling pretty action packed. Let's mosey ourselves into this thing. Okay, let's start off with Bowser. Now fans of Paper Mario should already know, but at the start of Paper Mario in its prologue, Mario has to lose to Bowser, as Bowser uses the power of the Star Rod to make the fight completely one-sided, after which Mario passes out and Princess Peach tells him to get up. However, if we were to have enough power to win this fight, what would happen? Well, apparently in the original N64 cart, this would result in a crash. However, on the version for Wii, the game can survive the experiment. And what happens is instead of Mario laying on the ground, he's shown giving a thumbs up, despite the fact that Princess Peach will still tell him to get up and the events will still play out the way they normally would. Well, actually, let's take it a step further. What if we just avoid the Bowser fight entirely? You know, when Princess Peach is talking to you in the hall, why don't we just walk right past her and try to go to the door behind her? What's gonna happen then? Well, while it's daylight out in the scene, the door over to the right is disabled, presumably because it's a completely different room than what it is when it's dark. Because when it's dark, that room gets used later on in the game. Therefore, if we were to walk past Princess Peach just before Bowser shows up, we can go through the door. What happens then? Well, we'll go up the stairs and uh, we're pretty much at the end of the game. You can see Bowser with Princess Peach in the clown copter, which is probably what you were going to see if you were to skip the prologue for Paper Mario anyway. So something kind of interesting is that you can hack Mario's cutscene address, and if you make it zero, you can move around as though you are not actually in a cutscene. When you do that on these end of chapter or start of chapter screens, you can move around and there is an actual boundary that you have. It's some kind of square shape, but yeah, it's its own basic little room. Not really sure why they thought that they needed to limit this, but it would appear that you can play around, just do your own thing in here. Particularly when you're working with the chapter start screen, you get a preview of the chapter boss and that they give you a silhouette. For chapter 1, as we see, it is all four of the Koopa Bros. Every individual character here has collision, which is pretty neat. Next up, let's ask the question what happens if we leave the conversation with the Elder Star and just go straight into trying to talk to Goombario? The answer is it crashes the game, which that's not good, I guess. So why don't we move on to a scene that's just a little bit further ahead. It's Mario sleeping in the bed while the Elder Star is talking to him there. What happens if we leave this scene and uh, the entire village is missing? That, that's even worse. So what's going on here is that while you're inside the building, the village is just called out. You can tell by the fact that all the Goombas are still present and that the terrain that you walk on is still the same as if you were there. Let's try visiting the post office after removing a bunch of our party members from memory. You may recall the guy behind the counter here will let you read letters issued to your partners, but considering we have none available at the moment, there is no dialogue. The result is Mario blinking each time we try talking to the guy, and the speech bubble above his head indicates that we have input the A button to speak to him. This usually occurs in situations where the character has no text available. Let's talk about Tubble Blubba, probably my favorite chapter of Paper Mario, and in large part that has to do with his quirk, which is that his invincibility, quote unquote, has a weakness to it, which is attacking his severed heart. You know, this is actually kind of weird to say out loud. But anyways, there's a sequence in the game in which there's a cutscene that plays out and the heart returns to Tubble Blubba and Mario automatically walks over to Tubble Blubba to start the boss match. Now what's cool about this is that no matter what you are, whether you're a bad guy or a good guy in a cutscene, you have collision, but you're not interactable. That is, unless in the cutscene you see the character initiate a battle. And so if we were to manually set the sequence for when Mario is supposed to walk into Tubble Blubba and come in from the right instead of the windmill, the dialogue doesn't happen, the automatic walking to Tubble Blubba doesn't happen, and now we have the option to walk into him ourselves. And so let's ask ourselves a question here, what happens if we hit Tubble Blubba with a hammer? Well, because I'm wearing the badge that automatically gets rid of enemies that are too weak for me, we don't have to see the battle at all, it just automatically goes to the next cutscene. <laughs> 
This is something I did a fairly detailed video on a couple years ago, but it's just so cool that we wanted to cover it again just briefly here. Alright, so when you first enter Toad Town, you can't go to the central or southern part of the area since there are some logs blocking your path, but it is possible to access it early using a glitch called Log Skip, or you could just hack your sequence as we've been doing most of this video. What you want to do once you get past those logs is talk to characters. This is unique to the Japanese version of the game, but if you talk to many of the characters found in this portion of the game when the sequence is too early, they will tell you things like, this message should not appear, if you read this, please go talk to the devs. It's assumed that these messages exist for the QA testers in case they accidentally stumble upon a glitch that would allow them to reach this part of Toad Town too early. And as you might imagine, none of those messages play when you are in the correct sequence. So naturally one of the things I want to see the most of is how characters interact with each other when they're introduced at the wrong times of the game. And there were some obvious scenarios like seeing what happens when Cooper talks to Cooper. And that is pretty funny and everything, but none of that is quite as great as when you're in control of Mario during Princess Peach's sequences and seeing what happens there. Now this might get explained more than once, but I want to keep it reiterated that what happens when a character has an animation in Paper Mario is that the game calls to that character's catalog of animations, and there's a certain value attached to each one. So when you do something like introduce a partner character to a scene that is specifically made for Twink, sometimes the results are pretty ordinary and sometimes they can be completely outrageous. I do love how when you try to get Mario to bake a cake instead, Lady Bao calls the animation where she reads the letter at the end of the game instead of Twink reading the book. There's also some pretty funny animations that get called in during the cutscene for the trivia segment. So a lot of people were pointing me out to something that was on Super Mario Bros. Twitter account. And in it, there's a post about a toad that tells you to talk to him after you save Princess Peach. However, it's also noted in this tweet that you're not allowed access to the train station again after you complete the game, therefore not being able to fulfill that blue toad's request. However, if you're in the portion of Toad Town that leads south, during a sequence in which you could go visit the train station and then change the sequence value to the end of the game and then go through that pathway, you'll end up at the train station during the sequence in which the end of the game is now proceeding. And so if we go over to that blue toad and try to talk to him, we can see that he has nothing to say. In fact, attempting to speak to him locks Mario in place and he's not allowed to move, pretty much locking the game. However, it should also be noted that the toad never tells you to go back to the specific spot to talk to him, and there are a bunch of blue toads at the end of the game that you are allowed to talk to before reaching the credits. If at any point during the base game you felt like hacking your sequence back to Prologue, before Princess Peach's castle was taken up into the sky by Bowser's castle, you'll notice that the loading zone on the right here does not work, and uh, they really must have wanted you to not gain access to Shooting Star Summit if you somehow gain control during the intro cutscene. But you might find it interesting that you can enter the room using that loading zone, you just can't leave. Just for fun, why don't we try to make the beginning meet the end? What I'm talking about here is, what if we take the first sequence of the game, and in the middle of that sequence, switch the sequence over to the end of the game? Seeing as both times you're going to Peach's castle, why not? Let's see what happens. So what I did here was I changed the sequence before we entered another room, and despite the fact that Luigi disappears, you can still see his shadow, and you're still locked to this cutscene, but that's not the weirdest part. But once you get inside the castle, that's where everything starts to get a little bit strange. As you can see, Princess Peach that's supposed to show up at the end of the game does show up, she just starts flying through the air, which I guess is pretty consistent with her role in Super Mario Bros. 2. Enough with the hacking, we're going to be talking about the biggest sequence breaking glitch available in Paper Mario. Uh, this one is really complicated to explain guys, so I'm going to try to keep it short at the risk of oversimplifying it. There are a couple other requirements to setting up this glitch that you have to do before we even reach this point. The first is that you need 32 key items, which can be done by doing other glitches in the game. And the second is that you have to leave the dolly in this tree because that is required to do this glitch. First we do a glitch called LZS, Loading Zone Storage, and that is just so that we can fall out of bounds in the next room. The entire reason we're doing that is to set up something called a Cooper Super Jump, which will make more sense in a second. 
And just as an additional note, no jumping allowed until we do the Cooper Super Jump. We are going to toss the dolly over and over, hoping that it goes left and eventually on top of the save block. Once it's up there, we are going to quickly position ourselves right underneath it and perform that Cooper Super Jump. Usually the Cooper Super Jump is pretty quick, but grabbing this item in midair is going to lock our velocity. And when we throw it away, we are going to fall down so fast that we clip right through the ground. Conveniently, this is where an NPC, Junior Troopa, is stored 1000 units below, and we are going to first strike him. Now, this might just seem like a cool method of refighting Junior Troopa, but by doing this, we update the game to believe that we only just finished the fight in the story, which means that no matter what your previous sequence was, we are now back in prologue. Having all of the partners and all of the badges and all the other abilities, hammer upgrades, boot upgrades, all that stuff, this early in the game will let us do a ton of cool glitches. I'm not going to cover all of them in detail because there are more than 50, though you will be able to see one in a second here where I switch to Sushi and Sushi starts pretending that she is Goompa in the cutscene that's coming up, which is really funny. It's pretty weird. I don't want to take too much time here, so I'm going to hand things over to She Says in a sec, but if you want to learn more about Paper Mario glitches, you can check out my channel, Strider7x. He's going to link it in the end screen and in the video description. So thank you so much for having me, guys. Alright, here's the big one. What if we change the sequence to a point in which Princess Peach could escape the castle? Well, there are a lot of steps here, and I really don't want to mitigate this accomplishment by just glossing it over, so I just want to talk you through a process here. The sequence that I chose was near the end of the game where Mario could walk freely through the castle to try to rescue Princess Peach. If you try to do it during the scene in which the game ends, there's someone that's going to stop you, and if you try to do it towards the beginning, Luigi stops you. So that means that we have to step outside of Princess Peach's castle, and then go through Bowser's castle in order to completely escape, which is not an easy task. And the reason why it's not easy is because Princess Peach is not suited for battle. Sure, she is coded to be in a battle, but the way it's supposed to work out is heavily scripted. It's supposed to have Twink attacking with Princess Peach focusing Twink to make him a little bit stronger. However, Princess Peach is never supposed to get hit, and if Princess Peach ever gets hit, it's going to completely crash the game. So, avoiding battles is an absolute must, because we can't even be in a battle, since Princess Peach doesn't even have an option to run away. So, for the most part, you can dodge all of the enemies inside of Bowser's castle. It's a little bit tricky, but you can get really, really close. It's only until you get to the part where there are gold bullet bill cannons. At this point, you can't jump over the cannons, because Princess Peach doesn't jump. And if you touch those cannons, which is 100% likely, it'll activate the battle. So what I had to do here was change the position of Princess Peach to somewhere ahead of the cannons. And I had to do this several times because there are also several cannons that are set up just like this. However, outside of that, there was no more position warping, and the rest came down to careful dodging. Miraculously, outside of those bullet bill launchers, there is no platforming that Princess Peach would have to do, and so after a long journey, you can make yourself outside of Bowser's castle. And yes, Princess Peach can operate the starship, which can get her back to Star Haven, where once again you gotta do a lot more dodging of enemies this one's even trickier because of the slopes and the speed in which the enemies chase you down but once again it is possible and once you've made it through all of that princess peach is finally back to the mushroom kingdom or the mushroom kingdom hasn't been returned just yet she can at least go back to toad town and here in toad town you're gonna notice that everyone's talking to her as if she is mario I guess there really shouldn't be any surprise there. Why would there ever be unique dialogue for Princess Peach to begin with? And one more thing that I thought would be completely impossible, very happy to find out that's not the case. Without having to jump whatsoever, Princess Peach can clip herself on top of the pipe that brings her back to Mario's house, talk to Luigi, who also doesn't believe that Princess Peach is staring him right in the face, go inside the Mario Brothers house, and end this little adventure and this video with Princess Peach losing some of her sprite and going to sleep in Mario's bed.